Sarah, how about you, Dr. Powers? I always use a really, really over the top analytical biochemistry sort of thing, but it, it helps. <laughs> um, so redheads, those mutants, um, they got this MC1R gene defect. That's why they're redheaded. It's a broken gene that messes with pyrosinase and that makes them turn out freckly and redheaded. That is a mutation. We know this. We don't really consider redheadedness as a disease, but cystic fibrosis is due to a, bo a broken gene and that the CFTR doesn't work right and that's a disease. If the MC1R is broken, you're a redhead. That's just how it is, right? But we don't pathologize that. We just view it as that that person just has that allele and they have red hair. And they occur at approximately the same rate that transgender people occur in the general population. And so the best way I can explain it is imagine if you had somebody that you knew who their entire life that you've known them, their hair has been black. It's just black. It's always been black. You just always thought they had black hair. And you see them after a few months and their hair is bright red growing out of their head like that. And you're like, what is the deal? And they tell you that they've always been a redhead. They've just always dyed their hair that if they don't dye their hair, it grows out red and they've stopped dyeing it. Because that's the way I look at transgender people when they come out. It's, it's not like they weren't always a redhead. They were always a redhead. They've always been a redhead. Their hair just was dyed. And they reached a point where they were finally tired of dyeing their hair. And so they're gonna let their red hair show and then everybody can see it. Everybody's confused because they're so used to them being one way. But in reality, this is the way they've always been. It's just now blatantly obvious to everyone. And so families that look at their little redheaded kid and are like, well, we don't want any redheaded kids in our family. You have to dye your hair. Well, that seems ridiculous, right? Like that's a totally crazy thing. It's kind of like um, there was an American kid that went to a school in Japan, this girl. She's blonde, naturally blonde. And they tried to force her to dye her hair black because like that's in Japan, like all the, they have like certain hair color standards you have to have like to be like part of the school uniform. And she was like, no, I'm not dyeing my hair black, like, because it's not black, like that would, that would be artificial. My hair isn't a natural color, there's a whole battle about it. But like, it's kind of the same concept, forcing a kid to be something they're not so that you feel more comfortable would be equivalent to what we do to these people. So recognizing that just, you know, and, and I don't wanna say like a defect, but like in all reality, the overwhelming majority of the patients that I have, I can pick up some kind of anomaly in them before they start HRT something. The FTM is more than the MTS, but they've got some sort of hormone weirdness going on. No one chooses to be trans. Nobody. I mean, if I have a kid and they turn out trans, I'll be like, shit. Because I don't want a kid that's trans. I don't. Because it would be really hard for them. In the same way that I don't want a kid that's disabled or blind or anything of that nature. I would want them to be happy and healthy and life to come easy to them. And like, if you're selecting your character at the beginning of the game of life and you click trans, the difficulty bar goes whoop, and jumps up over to here. And that's just the way it is. So like, I don't want that to happen to them only because it would make their life harder. But I can also, as the parent, not make their life harder for them. We can take these people and be like, oh, so your hair was always red the whole time? Oh, well, I guess that's okay then. And then let it go and let them just have their red hair because it doesn't hurt me at all. And it does hurt them to force them to be something that they're not. I don't know. That's how I look at it. I just like to say here that I think in a sense you speak from personal experience because I imagine mm, being autistic for you was, was like something that you, was additional that you had to, to work through. Right. Dr. Powers, do you think that that's, that's true? It is every day. It is right now at this moment. Right now, I have a mask on. I always do. Um, the only person that ever really knows the real me is like my immediate family and my wife. That's it. Because the real me is a machine. I'm like an analytical box. And I, I struggle to have the normal empathy and other things. And I've built constructs on to be like, okay. And that's kind of how I got to this point with trans people. Like I said, when I first met one, it's like, <laughs> really? Wow, that sucks. And like, that was how I felt about it. Now I have kind of artificially created an empathy and understanding for them. Once I can tie it to something that I have personally felt, like when my house burned down and my cats got killed and like I lost everything and I lost my job and, and my friends and like, and like everything, everything. 
yeah, I was like, oh, I guess this is God being like, hey, this is what it feels like to be trans. And I immediately after that point had so much more empathy for them because I understood what it was like to lose everything like that you know, through something, no, no fault of your own, so to speak. So, yeah, I mean, being having to wear a mask all the time and be super cognizant of everything that comes out of my mouth. Like as I'm talking, right, offensive, annoying shit is in my head. And I'm like, no, I shouldn't say that. And my brain literally just went, you probably shouldn't have used a curse word on this video chat. And then I'm like, well, it's out now. There's nothing I can do about it. But I'm constantly doing that in order to be able to function in society. And I, to that regard, yeah, I really empathize with them, especially the people who are watching this that are stealth. Like right now that like either one, you're stealth because you finished everything or you're stealth because you started nothing, that they're completely pre-transitioned. I empathize with them just because like, it's that thing that sits in your chest that's just kind of always there that you just wish wasn't. But it is, and it's just core to who you are. Uh-oh, that's not good. Oh, never mind. The uh, Michigan just put out an emergency alert for our, uh, our COVID situation over here because we're Americans and we're stupid and we refuse to wear masks.